Hey guys, welcome to my Duo of Shadows tutorial. I hope you enjoy and leave me any feedback in the comments below. Intermediate Shadows knowledge is required to follow this Duo of Shadows tutorial because I won't be explaining all the very basics. This video is aimed at end game players. To follow this guide you will need at least a 6-8 warrior or a pally with decent gear, and a legendary pet with heal and magic kill is highly recommended, however it can be completed with a max rare pet. I am using a legendary in this video. On the left is an image of the Shadows dungeon portal and a key used to open the dungeon yourself. The Shadows has a great loot drop table with 3 white bags and all tops including top tiered rings, such as the UBHP. This is a map of the entire Shadows. As you can see the starting room is on the left, the second boss is towards the centre including the 3 switches, and the third boss is located towards the top of the map. I will not be covering the secret switch in this video because it is unnecessary if you are doing duoing with a warrior and a pally. There are several spawns in the shadows, some are easier to clear than the other ones. The shadows starts in a square room with a single switch at the beginning. You kill the switch to proceed to the main room. Here is a picture of a map that I found on the wiki of the room leading up to the first boss. It shows the path to take and what not to take. For example, a paladin would go take the shortest path at the top and a warrior would take the bottom path. The pally would join the warrior at the bottom path after it had completed the first switch in the room above. The switches are numbered on the map and the red dots simulate enemies. So here you can see in the video we both take the same way to the secret switch just for the video's sake so I can show you whereabouts it is and where not to go so that you don't activate the spawns in the middle. This is the first spawn that's always the same, the Stone Titanum. The Stone Titanum spawns a paralyzed minion and a minion that deals a lot of damage so you have to avoid it. Switches are required to kill in order to proceed to the next area. Stand in the red barrier and you will activate the enemies. This varies with the spawn of the enemies. I use a sea sword to avoid it. Here on the map you can see an example of two spawns that I showed earlier in the video. In order to make this part safer for us we clear the tower behind. The Paladin Obelisk is a tower that spawns an enemy that deals a fair amount of damage. Ice Adepts are the most feared enemy in the Shadows. They have a lot of damage output and they shoot a confused bullet that can easily put you into a bad position and lead you up to death. They also spawn a damaging ice portal. The Ice Mage does not do much damage, but it spawns an ice sphere that does an incredible amount of damage and explodes on death. Most of the fire enemies in the shadows do very little damage, however a fire adept throws a fire portal that shoots confused bullets. This can be very dangerous.
This is easily the most annoying enemy in the shadows. It will always move away for you and it will shoot unstable bullets that cause you to shoot in any direction. They can be easily killed by pushing them into a corner. This is a map of the first boss. The towers must be completed in the order 1, 2, 5 and 6 in order to start the boss. The yellow towers, which are 3 and 4, can be killed separately. However, it is advised that you kill them during the intervals of killing the grey ones. As you can see we stand slightly to the side so that the bullets don't hit us. The enemies will shoot their bullets round us and we will take no damage. Apart from in this clip, someone is standing slightly out of place and take half of the bullets, but that will be no problem if you do that in your duo. As we are waiting for the grey tower to be vulnerable, we do a fair amount of damage to the yellow tower. This is another example of bullets going round the player when they are standing still when they are standing in the right position, therefore taking no damage. We quickly kill the stone guards so that they don't overspawn and overrun us. You will want to stay together in order to do the uh, right amount of damage to kill the towers. However, in this clip we are not standing together, which is wrong. If you see this in your duo, do not panic. Just wait for the boss, he will stop shooting eventually and you will be able to kill the yellow tower and proceed the fight. The Forgotten King. It spawns blow bombs that deal a lot of damage and he has 90,000 HP. He has 70 defense, and he has a large loot table, including, including the Brace of the Guardian. Do not worry about the blue shots that he is shooting, because you will never have to go near them. One partner will stay near the boss, and the other one will pick up blow bombs. The person standing next to the boss will deal damage. I am not the best at dragging, so this can be done a lot better, but you should take as many off your partner as you can, because one or two will not matter. Having the warrior hitting the boss instead of the paladin is better, but I am dragging the video just to show you what it is like from my position. After a short while the boss will start shooting, but don't be too worried because the blow bombs will stop spawning as frequent as they are now. This is the courtyard. The three switches we will be killing will be leading off of this room. It is advised that you clear the whole room before you proceed to the first switch. This is the Archmage of Flame. It does not deal a lot of damage, 
but it can throw out a lot of bombs that deal a lot of damage if you stand on top of one. This is the Fire Mage. It does not deal a lot of damage at all, but it, if you do not kill it fast enough, it will skip to its second phase where it will do a lot of damage. There will always be a stone priest standing here. There will also be another stone priest coming up, which is right here. There will always be a tower here at the end of the right angle. And there will be another one 10 tiles up above the right angle. There are no set spawns for this room. If there is a tower in the middle, execute as shown in the video. Then start slowly clearing out the room. The switch is located at the back of the room. I wouldn't advise doing that. The second switch is a very straightforward path and there are no preset spawns, so I am going to speed up this part. This is the entrance to the third switch, considered the hardest one. It is the slowest to clear, so I will skip to the nearest preset spawn. There will always be a fire mage and an ice mage here, so running in isn't too dangerous. The third switch room is very big and the switch is located in the back middle of the room. It takes a very long time to clear. You can go through the middle or the sides in order to skip a few spawns. First we stick to the sides, but you can see on the map that the spawns are very bad. I'm 
and the spawns on the bottom are also quite bad. So we decide to take the middle route. We are quite lazy in this duo and we decide to try and skip some more spawns and we fail. I did not manage to kill the switch in time and in exchange, the third switch will now take even longer. The Twilight Archmage. It has 91,000 HP and 70 defense. Do not be alarmed by the amount of shots this guy delivers because it's only on the last phase. It also drops the Twilight Gemstone. Two Archmages of Flame and two Glacier Archmages spawn in this room. It is required that you kill them before the boss starts. The towers perimeter the boss room will shoot at you the whole time making this harder. You can push the glaciers into the corners of the room to kill them. You do not have to use a D-Blade here and I do not advise copying it. You can easily just use an Acclaim or any other sword you have. You will have to do damage to the boss whenever it is vulnerable. The boss will throw a blue or red ball depending on what phase it is, so be sure to kill it in order to hit the boss. This phase will be repeated until you do enough damage. Here we do enough damage to activate the bird phase of the boss. The orange one must be killed first and you'll be doing little bits of damage on each rotation. When the orange bird dies, the blue bird will stand still. Follow the steps that me and my duo partner take now. The boss is vulnerable every time it is moving between each purple magi generator. Sometimes you can hit it when it's standing still. You will have to deal a certain amount of damage or otherwise it will go into rage phase. I will not cover rage phase in this video because if you follow the guy properly you will not have to do it. The lava bridge path is easy and once you do it enough you won't have to stop moving. This is the lead up to the third boss bridge. I will speed up all of this because it is very simple and there are no preset spawns.
and also you can put these guys in the spot where I am about to show you. But it's kind of difficult to get them in the corner. And we eventually get it here. Usually it doesn't take too long, but it took us a while. You can avoid the spawns to the left of this text by walking up the side, but not every spawn as you can see here. The Royal Guardians, they have a high damage output and they are very easy to dodge. They have 25,000 HP each. Once you've killed the guards, you will proceed to the next phase. There are several ways you can do this phase, I will be showing you two. Stand here and some of the balls will sit out of the reach of the player. This will be at random. The balls will curve around you and sit next to you. If yellow jumps around, then you will take a little bit of damage but not too much. We now show the other tactic where the paralyzed pet kills them. You can slowly scale up the wall and hit the balls if you are not using a paralyzed pet. I wait for the yellow ball to die and do a bit of damage so that we don't have to do as much damage next phase. As you can see, I deal damage to the boss without taking any bullets because they do a lot of damage. This phase will be repeated several times once the guards are dead, until you do enough damage. When they die, you will do the damage as shown in the video. If you do not do enough damage, you will do the phase again. However, if you do it, like in this video, you will have to do the tentacle phase. When the boss stops shooting bullets, it's time to do damage. The phase is slow and very easy to dodge. The only threat is the small orange enemies. The boss will move up. You must stand behind the boss so that the shots curve around you. Do not be scared because you will not get hit. I am showing what it would look like by standing at the side. The boss will be vulnerable every 10 seconds. The boss will say, you test the patience of a god and you will then move to the bottom of the boss room. The boss then says, haha and you will move up to hit the boss. If the boss does not say impossible, he will not die and you will have to repeat the phase as shown in the video.
If you followed this guide correctly, this should greatly increase your chance of completing a duo shadows. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed. This took me a while to make and a lot of photoshopping, so please show me some support and feedback. This video took up to 162 files to make.